today I wanted to make one of those really cute basket chandeliers. I've been hunting for the perfect basket for this for probably a couple weeks now and I haven't come across anything. I think if it was a summertime and garage sale season I would definitely come across something. So I actually found this basket in our house. So I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to transform this basket into a chandelier. So I really wanted to do this for our guest room because it's kind of beachy but I thought I would also do one for the camper because we have this cute little table here. You can show the table. Um, and I thought it would just be really fun to have a little chandelier hanging from here. So this basket I think would be the perfect size to do as a chandelier. What do you think, Connor? Yeah. Do you see yeah. the vision? I see the vision all right. <laughs> I feel like it looks really awkward when it's just like a basket. But you can find really fun, creative baskets that have like different shapes to them. And I think that would probably look better than this. But I kind of just want to try it out and see if it works. So this I think will work out perfect. So let's go ahead to Michael's, get some craft supplies, and get started on this. Yeah. <laughs> So I ended up going to Michael's to get the rest of the supplies and I found this Easter basket. They have so many Easter baskets, so definitely check it out. They're also all 40% off right now. Like I said in the beginning, you can find some really cool um, baskets that are different shapes and have a lot more to them than these basic baskets, but I couldn't really find any that would fit the camper well. Um, so also I went to Hobby Lobby and I found this beehive decoration. You guys know my camper's name is Honey. So I thought I could somehow turn this into a light. The whole bottom is filled. So we're gonna have to figure out how we're going to core that out and somehow turn it into a light. So I also picked up some E6000 glue. You could probably use hot glue as well. Then at Michael's, I got these light kits. They are $16, but right now they're having a sale um, for 40% off, or you guys can just check the internet. They always have a 40% off coupon for Michael's. Then I have a pair of cutting shears and some scissors. Um, now I found this gorgeous tasseled trim from Hobby Lobby and it was only $3.99 and it was actually 40% off. So it was super, super cheap. Again, Hobby Lobby always has like a 40% off coupon. During this, Wilbur somehow found my receipt. Does anybody else's dog just want to eat paper all the time? Wilbur is obsessed with it and I just think he's so cute when he's chewing on paper. So sometimes I'll just give him the receipt and just let him play with it a little bit. So first I'm just cutting the tag off, <laughs> super exciting. Um, but anyway, I'm now gonna take out the ribbon. Weirdly enough, all of the baskets that had this ribbon on it also had a um, fabric lining on the inside and this was the only one that didn't. So I think this one was just kind of like defective but I decided to go with this one because it was one less step for me having to take out the inside fabric. So this was kind of funny. As I was taking the ribbon out, I didn't realize that there was this huge gap. And when I flipped the basket over and saw it, I was like, oh no, I already messed up this whole project. But then I thought it was actually kind of a cool design feature and I really like it now because I think it just adds a little bit something extra to it. So now I'm just gonna cut off the handles. So I just started by snipping the edge um, and then kind of pulling it apart. For some reason, this one was a little bit harder to get out or maybe it was just a me mistake. I think it was a me mistake actually watching this back. Um, so I ended up trying to just like cut all of that little section off right there. And then the other side, I kind of just pulled all of the excess pieces out. When you're cutting baskets, you just have to be really careful that you're not cutting something structurally that could make the whole basket fall apart. Connor, I guess in his school, they did like some sort of like basket weaving class and he made baskets. So he was very helpful for this project and telling me what not to cut because things could have been disaster. So if your basket feels a little wobbly or something, then maybe just glue some of the parts together. But now I'm just taking that E6000 glue and this tasseled trim and I'm just going all along the edges. You guys could also put this trim um, higher up on the basket if you want. You could do so many different things. You could make this colorful, you could spray paint the basket. There's literally so many possibilities for 
these basket lights and I just think that they're so fun. I'm really hoping to find an intricate shaped basket for our guest room and to do that. Um, so I'm gonna keep my eye out. I know Target sells a lot of cool shaped baskets. Like I saw like a pineapple one um, and some things like that. So I might have to try that out. So next we are just cutting at the bottom of the basket, it kind of looks like a little square. So we're just very carefully cutting little sections out one at a time. And this is where we're gonna feed the light through. And I'm still sick. I don't know how I'm still sick. I've been sick for like over a month now. It just doesn't wanna go away. So I'm sorry my voice is gonna be cracking throughout this video. But, um, so we just cut out this little square section here. And then we took the light kit and we put the plug through first. And then there's also going to be a little um, box that has a switch on it. So that part is coming out next. And I really love that these light kits have that little switch. I think it's really great that you don't have to unplug it and plug it in every time. They also come with um, some tools to hang it, like some hooks and things like that. That way you can swag the light and hang it. So this is what it looks like. I can't actually show you guys what it looks like hung up yet because it is going in the camper and we have to completely remodel it. So I kind of just have it draping over this little bookcase in our house but i did want to show you guys what it would look like everything in our camper is going to be like pretty much white maybe like wayne's coating or shiplap um and i think that this will just look so beautiful with it and help to make it feel warm because of the natural basket color moving right on over to this beehive when i saw this in hobby lobby i thought it was so fun i wasn't planning on making two lights but I just couldn't pass this up. Like I said, the camper's name is Honey, so I just thought it was perfect. I figured I could use it somehow, um, but I really wanted to try to make it into a light. The reason why I didn't use this over the dining table is because this one is a little small, so it kind of looked funny sitting um, over the dining table. So I think we're gonna put this in the corner by our bed. We can use it kind of as like a night light sort of. So first my brilliant brain was like, I'll just cut out the inside. That was horrible. Connor walks over with some tool. He put my sweatshirt on by the way, cause he was just like being silly. So that's why it's really tight on him. Um, so I'm not sure what this is called. I think that this is what we've used um, to do like our lighting in our house to make the holes in the sheetrock. Um, but if you guys want to specifically know what it's called, just let me know and I'll ask Connor. He's sleeping right now because it's like super early in the morning. But anyway, we put that on our drill and we just started to drill that in. Then the bottom pieces were the hardest to get out. We kind of had to go back in with the knife and cut those out. But after we got that first section out, it was really easy and we just kept hollowing out the inside. Next, Connor unraveled the top of the beehive and he drilled into that. Again, just to kind of make it a little bit easier. Wow, my voice cracked. Um, for us to get fully through. And this is also where we're going to weave the cord in. So now he's just taking a knife and cutting out more sections. This one was definitely more tedious and pretty messy. Luckily, we had our first really nice day in New York. It was 60 degrees. Actually, I think it was like 62. So we were loving being outside. Um, so the front of the beehive does have this like brown sort of effect to it. You guys can see it right there. So we wanted to make sure we didn't take that part out because we think it looks really fun. So that's why there is kind of like a bigger chunk. So now we just weaved the cord through and there's Wilbur, he was crying, he wanted to be outside so I decided to hold him. Um, so anyway, now all we have to do is just glue the top of the beehive and as you guys can see, we got the cord right into the center so it worked out perfectly. It's super seamless and I love how the top of that looks. Um, so for this light, we decided that we should definitely use like an LED light because they don't get hot like a normal light would. And since this is tiny and enclosed, um, we don't want any fires, or any mishaps. We probably won't be using this light as much, um, but I just think it looks so adorable. And I'm so excited about this. I cannot wait for the camper to be finished so we can put this in and just see how cute it looks. I did notice that one of the bee's wings was broken, 
but I was just too excited to do it. So I decided not to return it to Hobby Lobby. I feel like I could always make a wing um, if it really bothers me, but this is our little bed area in the camper and that is where we're gonna put the light. I hope you guys enjoyed this DIY. If you guys try it out, definitely send me some pictures. I'd love to see, but I hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.